tonight, this evening. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to open the two places of scripture tonight. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, that's our foundation scripture. We're going to read it again. And then we're going to also grab 1 Timothy 5. 1 Timothy 5. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody getting there? Yes, sir. You can stand while you do it, while you find it. Y'all can multitask, right? Amen. Yes, sir. Stand and turn the page. Hallelujah. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1, 2, and 6. We'll read. Got it? All right, ready? Read. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Verse 6, please. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. All right? Praise God. Do I have any bona fide bread casters in here? Are you, are you finding that you're finding it after many days? Yes. yes Already? Yes, sir. Already. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not even after many months or weeks. Oh, yeah, that just came to me. Because I, I was thinking months and weeks and years, but it's after many days. Yeah. yeah. Many days might be a few weeks, a couple weeks, whatever, but it's, it's supposed to come back in. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you, if you apply your faith to this, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. amen, you get your minds renewed yes. to the fact that it's coming back. You're not just giving away. Yes. You're sowing out, That's right. and it's going to come back to you. Amen. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a living witness. It comes back. Yes. Amen. Yes. All right. Uh, chapter 6, or rather 5 of 1 Timothy, please. 1 Timothy 5, verses 17 and 18. Yes. Y'all have that? Yes, sir. All right. Let's read together. Ready? Read. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle out the ex while it treads out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. I, that's my mistake. Let's read verse 18 again for me because I messed up. Ready? Read. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Did I say muzzle in the X? Praise the Lord. <laughs> we all got there. Praise the God. Father, thank you tonight for the word. Thank you that your word is true, is proven, settled in heaven. Thank you that your word, Lord, uh, produces what you sent it to produce. Thank you for the testimonies we've heard and are hearing already about how this word is being confirmed by signs following. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to do exactly what you said you do. Yes. You continue to increase us more and more. We receive it. We reject any, any notions, any thoughts that we do not increase. Yes. Right. Any notions or thoughts that we do not reap. You said if we sow, we will reap. Hallelujah. So we receive that thought. We make that thought our final thought. We thank you, Lord, tonight that the word is alive in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, take your seats tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we again been looking at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, uh, 1 through uh, 6. We actually looked at 1 through 8 uh, about how King Solomon, who is, uh, was a very, very wealthy man, uh, a king, God made him very, very, extremely wealthy. Uh, you know you're wealthy when Jesus calls you out in your wealth. And so Jesus said, not even Solomon in all his glory, or that word glory translates even to wealth and abundance, uh, was not a raise like one of these. So when, when Jesus calls you out for wealth, you're wealthy. And so we've been taking some advice from him, yeah. financial advice. We're, we're building uh, financial portfolios. Okay, you understand that? Uh, we're, we're not those people who tax season, we got it going on. And the rest of the year, you know, we're, we're ramen noodling it. That's not us. Anymore, right? Anymore. We're year-round ballers. 
The Bible says in Psalm 65, verse 11, that he crowns the year with goodness. He crowns the year, January through December. He crowns the year. So if we would do this, if we would cast bread like, like uh, he taught us all the time, if you cast bread all the time, it makes sense you'd have something coming back all the time. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's look at a scripture here. We looked at this several weeks ago, but I want to look, pull it back up. Proverbs 11. This, this is one of the scriptures that this same uh, rich man wrote. Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25. He, gives, he makes it very plain here. When a rich man gives you this kind of advice, you follow it. Remember when E.F. Hutton speaks? Some of y'all are old enough to remember E.F. Hutton. E.F. Hutton was a commercial. It's a, it's a company that was out. I don't know, no, they still exist. But it used to be out here many years ago, uh, and their commercials always talked about when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Because he gave such sound financial advice. Well, when King Solomon speaks, you listen. Because he's speaking by the Holy Ghost. You got it? All scripture is given by God. You understand that? Inspired by God. All right, so Proverbs eleven twenty four. Read it with me, read, please. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. So that person who sows increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to what? Now, Solomon didn't know anything about poverty. He was a rich man. But he knew what, what would lead to poverty. Laziness, no planning, hastiness. He talks about those things. Uh, foolishness. Okay, but he says the way to get to increase more is to scatter, is to sow. Okay, and then he says here in verse 25, the generous soul will be made what? Rich. I mean, he made that very plain right there, right? This is a rich man talking to people. The generous soul will be made rich. That's pretty plain there, right? And he who waters will also be watered himself. All right, so he's teaching us how to do this. So we looked at so far, uh, six areas uh, where you can cast your bread. We dealt with uh, gifts. Remember that? This is review, right? Yes. Gifts. And what do gifts do for us? They make room for us. Amen? Then we looked at tithes. Tithes. And what do tithes do? Tithes open up the windows of heaven for us and pour us out such blessing that we don't have room enough to receive it. So it, it waters our seed. So that's why I tie this so important when you're doing all, of, all these other things because you don't want seed in the ground and no water. You also don't want water and no seed. Okay? So tithe is important. It opens up heavens, but it also protects our seed. It protects our harvest from the devourer. Amen? We also looked at offerings. And remember from uh, num Numbers chapter 10, offerings serve as a memorial before God. So when you've given your offerings, when you get in a tight, your offerings speak up for you. That's what, that's what it says in Numbers chapter 10, verse 10, that your offerings will serve as memorial before you, before God, rather, for you. All right? Then we also looked at um, first fruits. Yeah, somebody's got the order here. First fruits. And what do first fruits do according to Proverbs 3, 9, and 10? They bring financial fullness and overflow in our lives. All right? Hallelujah. So we do first fruits offerings. And we also looked at alms. Alms, that's what we give to the poor. We, we bless the poor, the orphans, the widows, those who, who, who are in need. When we give alms, those alms are gifts to them, but they are loans to God, which the Bible says he repays. So it's a guaranteed loan. Now, I don't loan it to the person. I give it to the person. But God says to him, it's a loan. And he repays. So you give to the poor, you can never lose. You'll always, you'll always at least get back what you gave. At least what you gave will always come back to you when you give to the poor. All right? Y'all getting these things here? So gifts, tithes, offerings, first fruits, alms. These are various ways you can give now. Various ways according to what he taught us here. Then we looked at, uh, most recently, two, two Wednesdays ago, partnerships. Partnerships. Man, we had a blast teaching that. And with partnerships, the benefit or the reward is you partake of the grace or the anointing.
that's on a man or woman of God's life. Amen. When you go into partnership with them. Amen? Amen. Now we looked at, uh, we saw in the Gospels how Jesus Christ interacted with those women and others who were his partners, right? Amen. How uh, he, they were always close with him, they traveled with him. When his resurrection happened, uh, the, the first ones he showed himself to was not his disciples, not his apostles, not his, his uh, mother and brothers. He showed himself to his partners first. Yes. Because partners uh, come under a different relationship with, with uh, that person, that man or woman of God. We also looked at Paul's relationship to the Philippian church. You remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Paul had other churches who would occasionally do things for him. And he said to all, the, all those churches when he talked about, talk, wrote, wrote those letters to them, uh, I have you in my mind, or I remember you when I pray. But the Philippian church, if you remember Philippians chapter 1, verse 7, remember that. Pull it up, please. Philippians chapter 1, verse 7. And Paul said something about them. He said, I have you where? In my heart. Not just on my mind, but in my heart. It's a different place, right? In other words, a special affection, a special affinity, a special relationship, a special connection to you that's different than everybody else. I have you in my heart. You're closer to me. Yeah. Then he said, uh, in that same verse, you've become partakers of my grace. Yeah. In New King James, the thing says, uh, partakers with me of grace, but King James says it more clearly, you are partakers of my grace. In other words, the same grace, the same anointing, the same ability, the same blessing uh, that was on Paul's life, anyone who partnered with him, he said, you partake of that. Yeah. You share in my grace. So part of uh, what, remember, remember the scripture Jesus said, he said, if you give a, a prophet a cup of water yes. in the name of a prophet, what did he say happens? You receive a prophet's reward. In other words, you partake of the anointing and the reward that's on his life that's right. or her life. That's right. Okay? So we saw that here. And, um, I mean, we were blessed to see that. Yes. How Paul and Philippian church, they had a really special a close connection. You read through the book of Acts, you'll see Paul always stop through Macedonia. Yes, Philipp Philippi was the principal city of Macedonia. Yes. And no matter where he was going, he always said, I'm stopping through Macedonia. Yes. Those were his partners. Yes. He always hung out with them because yes. he had them in his heart. Yes. All right, now, let's look at our scripture tonight that we're, we're uh, picking up. 1 Timothy 5, uh, 1 Timothy 5, 17. I keep wanting to go to 617, but it's 517. <laughs> Praise God. Everybody okay tonight? Yes, sir. Y'all got to be with me because this is, this is kind of difficult to preach yes, uh, as it was last Sunday, last, uh, last time we preached, because people look at the preacher like he's trying to get something. Come on. But I'm not. No, no, no. no. Just like Paul said, I'm not telling you these things. This said to the Philippian church in chapter 4. He said, I'm not telling you these things because I desire a gift. He said, I, I desire the fruit that abounds to your account. Yeah. Remember that word account we saw was the word logos, your words, to make your words yeah. effective. Yeah. You've been speaking and decreeing and declaring and everything and nothing's happening. He said, when you partner with me, your words all of a sudden become activated. Yeah. Okay? So I'm saying like Paul, not that I'm trying to get anything from you. I'm trying to get something to you. Uh, what, what I teach you is what I already practice. That's right. There are some things my wife and I are practicing right now we've not been released to teach yet because we're proving it first. That's right. I, I shared that with you all a couple months ago now. There some, they were asking me something. I said, I, I can tell you a little bit, but I can't preach it and teach it yet because we're still proving it. That's right. yes. it's working, we, we know it's working, but I want to get to a certain point. I, oh, boom. Now I can come and preach and say, okay, here's how it worked. See, that's what, he, that's what he tells us in Isaiah 62, verse 10. He tells the priest, he said, you go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. So our job is to go through the gates. We go out and we test it and we prove it. We test the water and then we come back and say, come on in, the water's fine. Right? So anything, anything that I'm teaching you and preaching to you is because we've tested it, we've proved it, we know it works for ourselves. Hallelujah. 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 I, I got so much I want to testify about, but I'm not, I can't testify about it. Because <laughs> I know what God is doing. Hallelujah. Maybe I'll share something later. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so we're in verse 17. Let the elders who rule well 
be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in what? In the word and doctrine. All right. Now let's break this down here because I believe we can help some people tonight. Because a lot of people um, have this, I'll just say, have been deceived. And we'll get to that here by the end. Because people, they, they see people doing things like, you know, a uh, pastor or a guest speaker preaches or teaches a word and they come and they sow into their lives. And I ain't doing that. They think, well, you know, they just give it to a man. And don't understand that what you're doing is you're putting seed in ground. And, and the person who spoke or taught is just ground. And there's a response to the word that not only seals the word, but gets, uh, gets a, a return in the life of the giver. I know this is true. I wouldn't teach you this if I, if, if I didn't know it was true myself. And I know it's true because I've been working it. My wife and I have been working this now for a, for a long time. All right. Um, that word honor. Let's look at that, please. The word honor. Uh, up here. Hopefully, y'all got that. The word honor is the word uh, "time," which means a valuing by which the price is fixed. Also, of the price itself of the price paid or received for a person or thing bought or sold. So we see we talk about the price. It comes from Strong's number G5099, uh, to know, which means to pay to recompense. Okay? Y'all got that? So let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double pay. <laughs> I, can, I can see how y'all... Double valuation. Double, rec, double compensation. That is the word honor there. So honor here is not talking about you coming and saying, oh... You my dad, oh, you my pastor, let me get your coat for you, let me carry your briefcase. That's not, that's not all he's talking about. Oh, I respect my pastor. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about here compensation. And I'll show you this here because you, it's weaved throughout Scripture, throughout the New Testament. Okay? So if y'all hold on and, don't, and don't, don't let the devil try to unteach it, you'll get something here. This word honor, uh, time, T-I-M-E, how we spell it, but it's pronounced time. I'm a, it's found several places, but let me just show you a couple places where it's found, all right? Okay. The same word, the same Greek word, translated differently, but it's the same Greek word, so you understand where we're going to. Acts chapter 5, Acts 5. You remember the story in Acts 5, the, the major story in Acts 5 with the early church? Verse 1. Y'all there? Yes, sir. But a certain man named who? Ananias, Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, did what? Soul Verse 2. And he kept back part of the Timae. Oh. Oh. I think King James used the word price. He kept back part of the Timae, price or proceeds. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the timae of the land for yourself? <laughs> you understand that? So I'm showing you what, where this word timae is, is talking about. I'm going to just, yeah, it's talking about money. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not, not, yeah, I'm trying to rub your back and get you to take it. But can I shoot straight? I like that. that that's what I like about y'all. I told my wife this Sunday when I left church, I said, I said, I like this church. I told her that Sunday when we were on our way home, I said, I love this church because y'all like truth. 
Young, old, middle, doesn't matter. You like truth. Most people, they can't handle the truth. But you all can handle the truth, and I like it. And you keep coming back. Even when the truth is hard. That's a, that's, that is a healthy church. That is a healthy, mature person who can take truth and keep on running, come back to it. All right, so I'm going to just, I've been liberated tonight to just speak the truth. All right, okay, okay. So keep back part of the Timmy. All right, let's look at another place here. Acts chapter 7, chapter 7. I know some of y'all are thinking, well, Pastor, I already know this. I already do this. You ain't got to preach it to me. Okay, but there's, there's, there's more of you than not. More of you in here that do not than there are that are. Okay? And again, it ain't, it ain't trying to, me trying to do anything for me. This is, this is for anybody who rules. I'm going to show you this. Because it's not just your pastor. Or the preacher or teacher. Okay? What did I tell y'all? Acts 7 and verse 16. This is when Stephen has given his address to those men. He says, and they, they were carried back to Shechem and laid in the tomb. This is Jacob's bones here. And laid in the tomb that Abraham bought for a sum of money. Timae. So sum of money is Timae. <laughs> okay, all right, Acts 28. I'm going to show you the same word again. Now, you can find it all over the New Testament. I'm just only giving you just a few, okay? Because there's more than, more than we have time to talk about. Acts 28, verse 10. This is when Paul lands on the island of Malta or Melita. Island, that island still exists today. It's a very nice vacation spot, actually. I've never been, but I'm, it's what I, we're on our way to there. All right. 28.10. They also timid us in many ways, and when we departed, they provided, come on, what were they doing? They were timid. They were honoring. They honored with things. You understand that? Not, not just with the words, man. We sure appreciate you. <laughs> appreciate you, Doc. All right. <laughs> so we okay? Yes, sir. So sum of money, price, proceeds, honor, all the same thing. Okay? All right. So back in 1 Timothy 5, verse 17, it says, Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double price, proceeds, sum of money, honor. Okay? Especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. All right, now let's deal with something here. He says, let the elders who rule well. So the key is, you got to rule. And he says, if you rule well, you're worthy of double honor. But what if you don't rule well? You're worthy of honor. <laughs> this is going to help somebody. This, 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 this is going to help somebody in marriage. It's going to help some kids. It's going to help you at work. Come on. Let those who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. But if you just rule, it's just single honor. But it's still honor. All right? Because all those who are in authority are due honor. All those who are in authority are due honor. Tonight, I don't know if y'all realize we're talking about honorariums. This is... This is Part 10, we're talking about honorariums, okay? All right, because this is that word where we get the word honorarium from, okay? Now, so let's go to Romans 13. Hallelujah. Are y'all okay in this middle section here? <laughs> All is well. Okay, Romans 13. Let me show you something here. Let those who rule well be counted worthy of what? Double. Double honor. All right. Chapter 13 of Romans, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to who? The, government. the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, 
and the authorities that exist are. All right, now, uh, King James says, let everyone be subject to higher powers. Uh, higher powers. Okay, New King James translated to uh, governing authorities. Now, the, the, the immediate understanding is government. And it is government. But we need to find out or realize there's different types of government that God established. Because it says here, there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Ordained by God. All right? So what are the, what are the, the types of authority, Pastor? Number one, there is family government. Mm -hmm. Let every soul, every soul be subject to the governing authorities. In your family, there is a governing authority. I better come over here. In your family, there is a governing authority. If you're in a, a house with a husband and a wife, the governing authority is the husband. Amen. He can share authority with his wife, but in God's eyesight, the husband is the governing authority. Because there's family government. See, you're just thinking about Obama and, and, the, and the mayor and the governor. No, there's family government. Somebody runs the household. When Paul talked to Timothy about the qualifications of a bishop, he said that bishop must be the husband of one wife and he must rule well his own house. He must have his children in subjection. In other words, he is the governing authority in his house. Now, if, if again, he can share that with his wife, and I, I believe he should. He should. If there is no husband there, Mama is the governing authority of the house, young people. I, young people, you ought to be just as, subject, just as subject to your mama as you are your daddy. Got it? So we can say parents, we can, we can sum it up that way. Parents are the governing authority in the household because there's family government. Then there's also, next in, in God's order, I'm going in God's order here because family is first. That's the first thing God established. Right. Family first. Then, then we saw next spiritual government. Right. Spiritual government. So in spiritual government, uh, there's, a, there's a pastor or a shepherd or an overseer, a bishop. You understand that? In, in, the, in the Greek, bishop, pastor, elder, they're all the same word. Presbyterals. Okay? So in every, every church, every assembly, there is a a, a, a presbyteros, presbyteros, it's a, an elder, it's a bishop, it's a, it's a pastor, it's an overseer. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, three times, it says, obey those who have rule over you. It says, remember those that have rule over you. And it says, greet those who have rule over you. Amen. Which means that in the church, someone is in charge. Amen. I got six amens on that. Someone's in charge in the church. You can't have all chiefs in the church. Everything isn't up to a vote in the church. That's the world system way of doing things. That's them trying to, trying to bring corporate America into the church. There's no voting in the church. The church walks in the comfort of the Lord and the fear of the Holy Ghost. You understand that? That's the axe model here. So there's a, le a rulership or leadership in the church. Governing authority. Then third thing God established was civil government. That's our presidents, kings, all those who are in authority, mayors, policemen, all those things, uh, military. You all understand this now? Everybody with me so far? <laughs> so notice what it says here. For there is no authority except from God. And the authorities, family, spiritual, and civil, that exists are appointed or ordained by God. Amen. Therefore, look at verse 2. Mm -hmm. See, because if you look at this and only think about the government out there, 
then you missed all of chapter 13. Therefore, whoever resists the authority, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm saying this for some teenagers, whoever resists the authority, now if your daddy or your mama is the authority, whoever resists the authority, I ain't doing that, you don't tell me what to do, whoever resists the authority, resists the ordinance or the power of God. And those who resist, come on now, will bring judgment on themselves. Not just to the, to the civil government, not just the spiritual government, government, but even to your family government. That's right, sir. That's why the Bible says, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Children, honor your father and mother that your days may be long on the earth. Woo-wee. Y'all seeing this here? See, so there's got to be honor in the family. Honor in the house of God and honor in the government. Now watch this. Verse 3. For rulers, rulers, family rulers, spiritual rulers, civil rulers, are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the belt? Y'all better hear this here. See, now this, this, this ought to be breaking your mind open to some stuff right now. Do you want to be uh, unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. And you will have praise from your mama, praise from your pastor, praise from the government. For he is God's minister to you for what? So, so your authority, your, your parents or your spiritual leaders or the government, out civil government, they are the ones God uses to minister good to you. Yeah. That's why God, that's why, why, why God through Paul uh, said that we should uh, pray for all those in authority so that we may live peaceable lives on this earth. Yeah. They're here to minister good to us. The government is not against us. They're here to minister good to us. Whether that's civil government, family government, or spiritual government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you, do, if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword. It's hot in here. Turn the air. It's burning up, y'all. Come on now. Fix that. It's supposed to be on 70. Hallelujah. Unless y'all just looking at me funny. Y'all making me sweat. <laughs> Ooh. So everybody's warm. Okay. All right. We're in agreement on that. All right. He's got minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. They're supposed to get that butter from the duck. Verse 5. Y'all know what I mean when I say that, butter from the duck. Verse 5. Therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, y'all ready? For because of this, you also pay taxes or tribute. We'll get, this, get to this in a second here. For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due. That word due speaks to debt. So pay them what you owe them. If you owe taxes to somebody, that word taxes also in the King James is the word tribute. Hallelujah. They came to Jesus Christ and says, uh, should we pay tribute to Caesar? Oh, no, this is the other time they said, actually, in, in, uh, in uh, Matthew 17, they said, they said uh, does your master pay tribute, the temple tax? Of course he does. Then they came later on, uh, does your master pay taxes? Uh, to Caesar, well, give me the note, the coin. Yeah, the Caesar's name is on it, pictures on it. Give, ta- give Caesar what is, render to Caesar what's Caesar's, and to God what's God's. Okay? So he says, render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs are due. That word customs, uh, bottom line, you get down to it is like sales tax. It's, it's, it's the end tax that you pay to consume a product. That's what this customs is here. 
that taxes, that first word taxes, like property taxes, income taxes. Okay. You study it out, you'll see it. Then he says, fear to whom fear. That word fear is phobos, which doesn't mean respect. It means to be afraid. That's real reverence. <laughs> and look at the la- next word he says here. Come on, look at the next words here now. Honor. honor. To whom honor? That word honor? Timmy. In other words, money to whom money is due. Verse 8, y'all know that one, don't you? Oh, yeah. no one except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now, that scripture we use in principle about debt, canceling debt and staying out of debt, and we we don't want to be in debt. And it's true, we don't want to be in debt because God said we should be lenders and not borrowers. God said so. We should be lenders and not borrowers. He hates when we borrow. He doesn't want us to borrow from the world system ever, ever. It It is a disgrace to him to borrow from the world system because when you borrow from the world system, you are in covenant with that system. That's why God hates it, okay? But if we take this verse in context, does it make sense to you now? He said if, he said if you owe taxes, pay the taxes. Yep. You can minimize your tax bill, your liability. Am I right about it? There are legal ways to do it, even ethical ways to do it. But minimize it, don't skirt it. Right. That means you can't be doing ki- uh, hair in your kitchen. Come on. Right? Come on. Washing cars under the table. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. People do a lot of stuff now. And you never pay taxes. Come on. Come on. And we, no, no, y'all ain't saying that. See, we, we're trying to walk in the blessing, right. we're trying to walk in prosperity. Right. But see, a lack of integrity is a blocker to the blessing. I'm going to holler at these business owners there. Integrity, lack thereof, will jam you up. You will not prosper when you don't walk in integrity. He who covers his sins will not prosper. So he, te- he tells you, pay them taxes. To not do it is sin. Got it? I'm not beating you up. I'm just trying to get you to understand this verse here. So taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs customs are due. So if it's sales tax, pay the sales tax. Don't tell somebody, you you know, you pay zero for the car and you really pay 5,000 for the car. See, you you face that test and you pass the test. Got it? Fear to whom fear. And then honor to whom honor is due. So there are some people in your life that are due honor That's right. in family authority. See, see, some that, that's what God said in, in, Mike, in uh, Malachi chapter one. He said, "If I'm if I'm your father, you're my son. Where is my honor? Because children are supposed to honor their parents." That's right. He said, "Y'all bringing me these old raggedy gifts." That's what he said. He said, y'all bringing me these old half-blind donkeys and lambs and stuff. I don't want that mess. I want that mess. This is what God said now. Now what happens is children reach a certain age, they grow up. And all of a sudden they forget about honoring their parents. Come on. They get grown, move out the house. Now they got their own, their own car, their own house. They got their own girlfriend and a wife now and they all that kind of stuff. And now you know, they don't, have, they don't know anything about honor. Start smelling themselves now, you know. Flying on their own. And don't know that they're hemming themselves up because when they fail to do that, they are in debt, according to verse 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So I don't care how old you are and how old your parents are, and I don't care if they are really good to you. That's right. That's not good. If they're not worth double honor, at least give them single honor. Boy, I just said something right there. 
If your parents wasn't no good, they weren't worth no double honor, at least make sure you give them single honor. You don't skip these holidays. You don't skip these opportunities to bless them. Mom, I'm trying to make it on my own now. You better bless your mom and your daddy. Woo-wee. Hallelujah. I'm talking about in family. Let, let, matter of fact, let's look at another scripture here. Let's look at another one here. Uh, 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. I'm talking about that honor, right? Y'all like this honor here? Because, see, I told you, it ain't just spiritual authority now. It's also family authority. Family government now, civil government. 1 Peter 3, uh, verse verse, uh, 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. She's trying to move fast. Verse 5. She done saw something. She saw something. Everybody with me on verse 5? For in this manner in former times, in this manner in former times, the holy women of God, holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves. What? Come on, y'all don't. Being what now? So the ones who trusted in God were submissive to their husbands. I can't get into that submission mess. Those who trust in God do. What if he ain't right? You trust in God. God can handle that. And God can take care of you. As Sarah... As Sarah, so we don't take that completely out of our vows. Do you promise to love, honor, and obey? We don't put that in there no more. Will you respect? Respect. Will you just, you know, now people want to write their own vows. I'm going to love you to the end, baby. He said, obey. All right. I'm just messing with y'all. Calling him Lord. I require that of my wife sometimes. Call me Lord, baby. Call me Lord. You, you want to get to me? Call me Lord. Here's your dinner, my Lord. Okay. All right, watch this. Whose daughters you are if you what? Do good and are not afraid with any terror. Now watch, watch the flip side. Verse 7. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. How many of you men want some understanding in your household? Tired of all the misunderstanding in your household. Let me show you how to, how to, how to fix the misunderstanding. Give honor. Y'all, y'all didn't say nothing. The women didn't even shout on that. He, he, said, he said, listen, listen, husbands. Future husbands, if you want to keep the understanding, keep down the confusion and keep some understanding in your house, he said, give honor. That word give from the Greek is, means to assign or portion out. That's is exactly what that word give means. It means assign or portion out. So when you get your check, when you get your payday, you make your extra money, dudes, fellas, you assign some or you portion out some. In other words, we put in our language, break off some. I'm trying to help you now. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you some understanding in your household. You all, baby, you got, baby, you got some cash. You, you all right? Are you all right? That's how you the asset before I leave the house. And how do you? You, got, you, you good? You got something? I want to make sure. I want to make sure I break you off. Money come into me. I'm, let me make sure I, I, I portion out. I assign you some here. You take this here. Matter of fact, my wife know I, she take most of it because I don't, I don't spend money. So I I can walk around with it with a thirty twenty dollars and, and it'll be it for a week. You know, you know, unless I go buy some peanuts or something. That's, right. Now, what am I doing? I'm keeping the, keeping the confusion down. I'm keeping my house with some understanding. And he says what you're going to portion out is, is Timmy. It's Timmy. Not baby, I love you. Timmy. 
So in other words, here it is, here it is. So husbands, if you want to have some understanding, give some honorariums. It's the word honorariums. Give honorariums to the wife. Let her get some shoes. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Let, let, her, let, her, let the girl get some shoes, man. And let her get some shoes. Let, let her get her some outfits. I, I, I've been wearing these jeans for 17 years. Don't make your wife wear no jeans 17 years. Let her go get some jeans. Let her go get a dress. Let her go look nice. Don't you want her to look nice? You make her smile. A happy wife is a happy life. And this is what this man is telling us right here. The Holy Ghost is saying this here. You want some understanding? Give her some honorariums. Woo! As to the weaker vessel. My wife is weaker. This isn't spiritually weaker. This isn't physically weaker. It's a, le- it's a, a lesser position. Not because she, she's not as smart as you or as bright as you. It's because the curse back there in the garden is said that Eve, her desire would be toward Adam. So now she's in a weaker position. So he says, you do this as unto the, for her uh, as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs. That word heirs literally means joint heirs together. Of the grace of life. So you're sharing the same divine supernatural ability. He says that your prayers may not be hindered. Are you seeing this here? So you see how honor must take place in family government? Honor must take place in spiritual government. Honor by taxes and tribute take, and customs takes place in civil government. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, 1 Timothy 5. 17. Did I help anybody here? (laughs) Wives, y'all know what to expect. Single ladies, you know what to expect. What you do is, if, you know, you check, see how he honors his mother and father. Check, you watch to see how he honors his mother and father. If he doesn't honor his mother and father, he's not going to honor you. He'll try to buy you. He'll try to buy you. He'll trick you with gifts. But that ain't the real him. Just to get you in, as soon as he got you in, he's going to cut all that off. I'm telling secrets, guys. I hope y'all... I got security, right? They might try to hit me. All right? Okay, so uh, 1 Timothy 5.17 in the Amplified Bible. Get an Amplified Bible for me, please. Hallelujah. Okay. Let the elders who perform the duties of their office well be considered double, doubly worthy of honor and of adequate financial support, especially those who labor faithfully in preaching and teaching. Somebody said Message Bible. Get the Message Bible, please. Message Bible. That's, that's always interesting. Give a bonus. Now see, that's what it is. That's, that's what it is. You understand that in the family. You understand that in government, civil government. Right? He says give a bonus to leaders who do a good job, especially the ones who work hard at preaching and teaching. Now let's, let's look at the same verse in the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Holman Christian Standard Bible. Read it. Read it. Read the elders who are good leaders should be considered worthy. See that word? Honorarium. That's what I wanted you to see. So you understand what he's talking about, how we get that word honorarium. Especially those who work hard. Not those who uh, uh, work hard. No, this is work hard to get the message. Labor. Give diligence to studying the word of God. Teach you something more than just giving you a book report. Okay. Take the time to get into the word and get with the spirit and get revelation from God. Okay? Now, let's let's work our way to the end here. Hallelujah. Verse 18. 
Well, let me go back to verse 17. Especially those. So those who rule well should receive double honor. In other words, those who only rule, they still receive single honor. But the ones who rule well are worthy of what? Double, double honor, especially. Now, this is, a whole, this is a whole other level. This is the third level of it. Especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Labor in the word, that's logos, and that word doctrine is teaching. Okay? Praise God. Verse 18. For the scripture says, the scripture, that's the Old Testament. The scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his. So it's pretty clear we're talking about money here. So we don't need to dance around that anymore, play around with that anymore. We're talking about money. Okay? When it comes to honorariums, that's what same thing you see in the civil government, family government, and uh, spiritual government. Okay? All right. Let's look at a scripture here. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Glory to God. Boy, it's almost Valentine's Day. That's how y'all say it, Valentine. <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> I ain't getting you nothing. You better show some honor. A meal or a small gift, something. Or just, hey, these wives might just want you to break off something. Just, just apportion me. Give me. Just give me a bonus. <laughs> Let me shop myself. Hallelujah. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. Are you there? All right. Whoever goes to war, whoever goes to war at his own expense. In other words, this is a, it's a rhetorical question. In other words, nobody does that. Who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its fruit? Or who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk of the flock? Y'all understanding this? Do I say these things as a mere man? Or does the law, does not the law say the same also? It's interesting, this grace man is teaching from the law here. For it is written in the, the law of Moses. You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? In other words, when God first gave that law to Moses, it wasn't really oxen he was talking about. He was showing, giving them a physical picture of a spiritual principle that will be carried on into the New Testament all the way till Jesus comes. Verse 10, or does he say it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he who plows should do what? Plow in hope, and he who threshes in what? should be partaker of his hope. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 11, highlight this. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? Do you see the exchange there? So in other words, so when you see people, people, people get messed up when they see this kind of stuff happening in the church. And they think them people are just foolish. Well, it's scripture that when you receive spiritual things, you sow back material things. When you sow spiritual things, you reap material things. I'm right about it, lights. Rather, the word is right because it says so right there. We don't have to make this up. It's right there. This is no, no preacher came up with no scheme like this. This is it's right there in scripture. If others are partakers of this, Huh? This what? Oh, it's a right now. Oh, it's a right. It's not just a good idea. It's now a right. He said, if others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Now, here's a scripture that people are going to jump on me about. Nevertheless, we have not used this right. But endure all things, lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. See, preacher, you shouldn't be taking no money from people. He's Because he said here, we have not used this right. Okay, you're right, he did say that. But let me tell you why he didn't use this right. Put your finger there. 
Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The next book, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He's talking to the same group of people here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. You there? Yes, sir. Verse 7. Did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel to you? Gospel of God to you what? He said, I preached to you free of charge. But keep reading the next verse. I robbed other churches. You understand why he said I, it was free to you because I robbed other churches. Now, you know, he didn't literally rob. What he meant was he, he accepted all the help from them. He said, taking wages because the Corinthian church wouldn't do it. So he said, but I, he, he was still taken care of. Yes. Taking wages from them to minister to you. Verse 9. And when I was present with you and in need, come on, I was a burden to no one. In other words, with you. For what I lacked, come on, my partners. You see that? So he said, listen, Corinthian church, you ain't got to, I, I know I ain't nobody to you. You ain't got to help me, but my partners got me. <laughs> See, that, that's why, you know, I laugh at people because people ain't going to give to no preacher. Man, do you know if God got to put money on the back of a monkey, he'll make sure his man's needs are met. <laughs> All right. They came from Macedonia and they supplied. And everything I kept myself from being burdensome to you, and so I will keep myself. All right, go back to 1 Corinthians. Hurry up, we got, we got just a couple minutes left. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Y'all see this here now? So I, I'm saying, because I'm going to get there up to a point here if we, if, we, if we have time. Verse 13. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple and those who serve at the altar partake? Come on. Uh-oh. I just found out about the offerings. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yes, sir. Come on. Y'all did just say y'all can handle truth, right? Yes, I mean, I don't even have to expound on this. You can just read it for yourself and understand how it's supposed to work. Verse 14. Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who what? Preach the gospel. Should live from the gospel. In other words, those who preach shouldn't be working at 7-Eleven and Taco Bell and IBM and Tech Data and Danka and Come on. Come on. those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. That's how their, their living is, is met. Got it? Okay, now this is, this is plain English here. All right, now let, let's, get, let's get to you on this real quick. So what is the promise? Because remember, we've gone through all these other six ways of giving, and we've always been able to find a promise attached to it. In other words, when you sow something, you're going to reap something, right. right? So let's get it here. All right, let's go to Galatians chapter 6. You know this scripture very well because y'all have been taught well yes, in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time we get a speaker come in here, yep. whether it's somebody out of town or somebody stand up beside me. Yes, Galatians 6. Yes, Pastor V preached last week. It should have been some Galatians 6 going on. I said there should have been some Galatians 6 going on. If not, some of y'all carrying a debt. Yeah, yeah, y'all said truth. We can handle the truth. We can handle the truth, Pastor. <laughs> All right, Galatians 6, verse 6. Ready? Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him. You know this verse, right? That word share in, in the King James is the word communicate. Is, is the Greek word koinonio, koinonio, which means to come into communion or fellowship with, to become a sharer, become a partner, join one, oneself to an associate. Y'all see this? Okay, so let him, him who is taught in the word koinonio, in all good things with him who teaches, share. It's the same word that Paul used. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 15, when he said, no church shared or communicate with, with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. 
It's the same word. All right? Hallelujah. Now, let, let me go and set your mind at ease with some stuff. I, I'm, in, I'm in no way trying to indicate to you that every time, I'll say for me because I'm, I'm, I, you see me all the time, that every time I stand in front of you that you have to, okay, slip something. But you, what you, you want to do is make sure you're, you're doing this on a regular basis. You understand that? I said, do y'all understand that? Okay. Praise God. Now look at that word, verse 6, let him. So well, what would happen when we'd have guest speakers come in or when we'd have speakers other than myself or Pastor Kim get up and speak, what we would do, we used to do all the time is, all right, we're just going to cut a check. We're just going to cut a check because the church, we're just going to cut a check and, and bless them. And what we found was we were disobeying verse 6. Because the verse 6 says, let him who's taught do the sharing. So that's why now every time somebody comes in as a guest speaker, we say, all right, we're going to receive a love offering. We're going to Galatians 6.6. 6. Because what are we doing? We're letting him, we're allowing the one who's been taught to share. You got it? All right, now, let's look at Galatians 6, verse 6 through 9, Amplified. Amplified. We want to read it together up here. I don't, I don't have it. Galatians 6, 6 through 9. Ready? Read. Let him who receives instruction share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his support. Verse 7. Do not be deceived and deluded. Now, now go, go back. In, in, the, in the New King James, in the King James, it says, do not be deceived. And we've been teaching on that the last three or four weeks here about pe people being deceived. Now, if any time you see where it says, do not be deceived, it's probably because Satan's trying to deceive people. Any place he says that is a key area where people are being deceived. That's why he says, don't be deceived. And that's what's happening with most people in the body of Christ. Oh, they ain't doing that. Okay. Obviously, it's something that's for your good. Because he says, don't be deceived here. All right? So let no man, uh, uh, don't be deluded and misled. God will not allow himself, come on, to be sneered at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or professions or by his precepts being set aside. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. So the one who trying to fool God is really fooling himself. For, come on. That and that only, keep going, verse 8, for he who sows to his own flesh, but will from the spirit, keep going, verse 9, and let us not and faint in acting nobly and doing right, for in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faith. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so what we see here is Paul saying, if he sold to the flesh or to your lower nature, well, how do I sow to my lower nature? I'm, all I'm doing is just not, not, not doing verse 6. Well, it's your lower nature telling you not to do that. That's the lower nature saying don't do that. Man, you can't give her that money. Man, you got to pay this, whatever. And you know, I understand everybody got bills. I, I got bills too. But what I'm saying is, it's the Lord nature that tells you don't do that. When it, it says here, do it. All right, what's the promise then? He says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For watch this. Whatever a man sows. This is one of the clearest places we see here in all, all of these eight ways to cast your bread where it makes a clear promise. Whatever you sow, that you'll also reap. Right? That, that word reap is, is a picture of harvesting. In the Greek, you'll see it, a picture of harvesting. It's a picture of taking your sickle. We looked this up in the Greek. It literally means to take your sickle and chop down your crop. That means you actually get your crop. Yes. Yes. 
I mean, it's a clear-cut promise that God makes here. So he says, verse um, 8, if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. Corruption is decay, destruction. It's decay, destruction. We've already read in Proverbs 11, 24 about withholding more than is right, and it leads to poverty. Poverty is the destruction of the poor. You got it? But he who sows to the spirit will, 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 will what? Of the spirit. Catch that. Catch that. Will of the spirit. Which means when you sow, the spirit is going to lead you to reap. What happens when you sow in this manner right here? Now it opens you up to spiritual wisdom, spiritual insight, spiritual guidance. That's why he says you will of the spirit. He didn't just say you will, you sow to the spirit will reap. He says you sow to the spirit will of the spirit. In other words, the spirit is going to lead you to reap. Yes, sir. Well, he just say reap everlasting life. That word life is the Greek word, uh, Greek uh, number 2222 zoe. It's the abundant, prosperous, bountiful, blessed, enviable life we always talk about. It's not when you get to heaven life. It's heaven on earth life. I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. I, Dick, I know this works. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me give you one testimony. As much as I'm allowed to say no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm just, as much, much as I can say without, without telling my business. You know, you know what I mean? My wife and I, we went to a conference last week. We were so blessed in this conference that we didn't have to spend any money, not one dime, because uh, the conference hosts uh, there in, in Lexington, where I, I preached there in Lexington the whole week, or one night, but it was a whole week conference, and uh, Boston Callahan, this group, they paid for all of our lunches, I mean, we ate fine restaurants for lunch every day. Fine. I mean, sit down, cater, you know, that service, that they were fine every day. And uh, at night, they paid for all of our day. had a spread at the church, so we, we didn't, and the, the hotel provided uh, breakfast. And, I mean, so we, we didn't spend a dime. The only thing we bought, my wife bought a juice, vitamin, vitamin water in the hotel. That was it. Amen. That's, that's not the testimony. I'm just, I'm leading into it. <laughs> All right, so we didn't spend any money. Now, we went there, we took a lot of money with us. Because we, we knew we had to eat. At least we thought we had to buy, you know, go to eat and stuff. And our plan was, we, we're going there, we're going to see mom and dad Derber, and wherever we go, we're paying. See, because we're, we're honoring. And we told them a couple times ago when they came here, from now on, you do not ever pay. Yes. We pay. Yes. And now every time we go somewhere, we fight over the bill. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Last time we came, last time they were, uh, they were here, uh, we, we were at BJ's. You remember that? Yeah. Pastor Callahan yeah. and them? And uh, somehow dad snatched the bill before I could get it. <laughs> and I said, doggone it. It was awful because we were about to fight over the bill. <laughs> and uh, what happened? My wife had a deal. We saw some of our members sitting over in the corner. Well, we'll just pay for their tape. We're going to pay it forward. We're going to pay it forward. Because we're, we're just going to sow. See, I live like this. We live like this. We don't, do, this ain't no game to us. We live like this. See, that's what I said. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I, I work the system myself. So anyway, we took a, a lot of money with us because we figured, we don't, you know, whatever. You know, Paul is like, oh, it's just your church credit card. No, no, no. This is, this is us. We're going we're gonna to sow. Got there, of course, didn't have, to, didn't, have to sow, didn't have to buy any food. But what we did was, well, we knew there was going to be a speaker each night. So we sowed like crazy. Amen. We did Galatians 6, 6. Every time a speaker Amen. got up to preach. Amen. Big time. Amen. Big time. We came back here Friday early morning, and so we missed the Friday night service, and we knew Apostle Callahan was going to preach that night. So Thursday night, before we left, I took a grip, 
and put it in his hand. Pascal hand, we're not going to be here tomorrow night, but I'm sown into this word. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Got it? Yes. All right. By the time, then we made sure we had enough money to leave, leave a, an adequate, uh, generous gratuity for the housekeeper. In the hotel. She cleans our tub. Yeah, she cleaned our tub. So that was worth it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now, we got back Friday, and we had been believing God for uh, a household item. I'll just leave it at that. Very, 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 very expensive household item. We need it. And uh, it was very, 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 very expensive. <laughs> and, uh, but we knew if we've, if we've seeded, yeah. harvest is going to come up. Yeah. Yeah. So that night, we were able to go to a place, and we found the exact item. Matter of fact, last year, we believed God for it. Remember, and we, because we saw it in another store. Yes, we did. And we didn't have the money. We, we weren't anywhere close to the money. And the Lord told us to sow it to somebody. Remember, I, you, oh, you remember that? Yeah. I just came, it just came to me. <laughs> I remember. I, I remember, exactly, I, can, I can call a person out right now because she's sitting right here who we sold into, yeah. believing God for this item. Because yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. See, if you don't have enough for the need, then what you have is a seed. So we did that. Got there, and Friday night, found the exact item, and we paid one-third of what the retail price is. Walked into a place, the lady's like, well, you can do it. Got it for one-third of the price. Crazy. Three times as nice. I mean, crazy. See, see, I can't explain that in the natural. And the natural will not do that. But when we work these supernatural laws, these supernatural principles of God, he always comes through. Boy, I tell you something. I got more, but I just, I, I wouldn't, I, <laughs> you know the Bible says when you're supposed to be blessed, uh, happy, prosperous, to be envied? Yeah. Man, we, we, we getting close to being just envied. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to tell everything because I want to make sure I got people who will rejoice with me. Yeah. Y'all will, I know. Yeah. Woo, boy. You understand? You see, so it's not that all of a sudden we had, we had the money to pay that premium price. Is that he brought the price down to where our money was. You understand that? The store, we got there like 10 minutes before the store closed. My, but my wife said, let's go do it tonight. All right, let's go do it tonight. That spirit got us to the exact place. Having to be a lady to say, you know, we're going to do this one. Let me make a phone call for you. Matter of fact, my wife has been winning there like, she, I will pay you this for that. I'm like, go ahead, girl. <laughs> go ahead, mama. <laughs> and, and the Lord honored that. Because that's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. And we got enough testimonies in here. So for you to know, it ain't just the pastor. It ain't just the preacher. I mean, all this debt cancellation, I'm sorry, Lord, where, where, where am I? <laughs> I mean, I, I've had some great debt reduction, but I want some of that cancellation. God is doing that. It's a promise. When we sow, we will reap if we do not faint. That's what he said, if we do not faint. As he, he said, so, so make sure you do good to all, verse 10, right? Especially those who are of the household of faith. Now, let, let's, let's get some straightening on that in, in two minutes. Here's a straightening on that. 
we've been thinking that meant especially those in the church. No. But it says those who are of the household. In other words, they are part and parcel to the household. Amen. In other words, they're the keepers of the house. It didn't just mean anybody in church. It meant those who belong to the house. They, they belong. In other words, they're part of it. You understand this? So when you got somebody preaching and teaching faith, you said do good to them. Do good to them. It's honorariums. So we've gone through seven of them. One more next week. My wife and I have been working all eight for quite a while now. And we, we know, we see how all eight work. We see the words of all eight. Just, yeah, we can't explain how. <laughs> I'm telling you, because it's supernatural. He makes all grace abound towards you. So that you always have all sufficiency in all things and you're bound to every good work. Amen? Did y'all receive that tonight? Well, give the Lord a great shout of praise if you receive that. Thanksgiving, Lord, we receive. Hallelujah!